This is Brian Putt. Today I'd like to talk about optimizing a portfolio and we're going to optimize it not to the expected value but to optimize it to maximize downside risk or if you will minimize the downside risk however you want to think about it or let me say it a third way maximize the P10 outcome. So let's assume that we have several ETFs that we're considering. We're going to use stocks because the data is generally available, although sometimes finding sufficient history is a little difficult. So I've got uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, S&P 500, mid-cap stocks, small cap growth, small cap value, and I threw in energy. And we're going to assume initially that we put have equal weightings on each of those segments for a total of 100 percent. To sample these segments we have historical data and over here we have the growth rates for those six segments by year for 2016 to 2001. Actually it's more of a October October rather than a, a calendar year but this is sufficient to for the demonstration. And over here, I have shown the correlation matrix for the six segments. So we're not going to use this correlation matrix. We're going to actually resample from this data to get our results. And I feel that resampling is much more appropriate. And I believe resampling is much more accurate than using the correlation matrix because the correlation between any two variables is assumed to be symmetrical. So coming back over here to the model, uh, what we have done is to initially sample, we're going to forecast this for five years I should say, and we're, for each year of the forecast we will sample a year. So in this particular iteration, the year one we sampled the growth in 2014, in year two of the forecast we sampled 2001. 2005 for a third and so on and so on. And that generated these growth rates. And then when we apply those growth rates to our initial weightings of equal, we get this particular outcome. So this is a deterministic outcome. And in this particular deterministic outcome, we started off with 100 units and it grew to 158. So it represented a rate of return or a growth rate of 9.6. If I was to look at a different simulation, another throw of these dice, so these blue, cur these blue th um, samplings are going to change. I now have a negative 5.3% growth rate. So my value of my portfolio is actually less than what I started with. And we're going to do this a thousand times. And when we do it a thousand times, we'll find that with this particular portfolio of equal weights, we have this distribution for the value in year five with an expected value of 150. So just to make sure we're reading this properly, let's just pick on this data point. There's a 50% chance of being less than 150 and also a 50% chance of being greater than. Over here, I'll call that that's going through the 80 percentile, there's a 80% chance that we have 200 or less and only a 20% chance of 200 or more. This is a similar chart but just showing the results in year one. Another way we can look at this this deterministic or this particular portfolio is to look over here at this chart. And here what we're showing you is the expected value growth rate by year and then also the P, P90 outcome in each of the years and the P10 outcome in each of the years. So since 100 would be no growth there's always going to be a, a chance of losing money with this particular portfolio. 
This gold line represents the current simulation. So now the question is, how can we improve this portfolio? So what we'd like to do is to maximize the P10 outcome. So in other words, this point on the curve here, excuse me, this point on the curve here, P10, right there. And maximize, we want to move that point as far over here as possible. Right now it's 83, 89. I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's take that, those results, and we'll just copy them right here. Okay. And as I change this portfolio, so I could go with 100% Dow Jones, let's say, or 0, 0, 0, 0. So what we have now is a portfolio that's all Dow Jones. It gets basically the same P10 outcome, 83 versus 83, but the annual return is only 6.3% versus 8.5%. And our value is now only 135 on expected value, rather than 150. So we can see how this thing works. Um, this is also showing the probability of losing money, if you want to think about it that way. The probability being less than 100. So we want to change these percentages with the balance of 100 being out down in energy to maximize this P10 outcome. So what we're going to do, we'll use Solver, go to Data, Solver. We're going to maximize P C24. We want C26. So we'll change that to C26. And we're going to do that by changing the variables in C9 to C13, C9 to C13. Uh, all the percent, percentiles have to be less than one. And the portfolio, which I believe is the whole thing here to include energy, has to be greater than zero. And then we're going to solve this. So we're maximizing this P. Uh, P10 or the 90% chance of exceeding this number. Okay, we have an answer after about five seconds. We'll say okay. And let's look at this answer. The answer is we put almost all of the money into the small cap value. Very little into energy. We've increased our P10 outcome to 99.76. That's good. Our rate of return has increased to 11.8 and versus the 8.5. That is nice analytically, but am I happy putting all of my eggs in one basket into the small cap value? What's the standard deviation? Standard deviation, standard deviation is a little bit higher than what we had before. So what we might want to do is to constrain the small cap value. And let's do that by saying we don't want more than 25% in the small cap value. So I'll come up to data, solver, and we'll add a constraint that this value here has to be less than or equal to 0.25. Okay. And then we're going to solve again. Oh, let me close this. And we'll just we'll just store this over here. Okay, now we're ready to solve. So we'll go to data solver solve. And we have an answer. Now this result looks a little bit more reasonable. I have forty two percent of the Dow Jones, thirty two percent of the mid cap and 25% of the small cap. This chart's fine, but I need a reference. Well, I had previously stored the 
P10 maximum. I'm going to apply that. And now we can see here's that 175 we stored previously corresponds to this 175 and that dashed line. By rejecting the option of having 100% nearly 100% small cap I've given up value from here to here. So let's stop there and we'll do a little more analysis in the next video. If you'd like a copy of this Excel model, uh, there is a link to the model in the description of this YouTube video.